Okay, hi, thanks Mike for the introduction, for inviting me here. Um, yeah, so I'm Bea and I'm a PhD student at the University of Copenhagen and I'll talk to you about cone snails and um, specifically the this somata satin pep like peptide that we found um, in the cone snail. So uh, let's start, let's start, yeah, let me see, no. Okay, yeah, so let's start with cone snails. So as you can see in the shell here, it looks like ice cream cone and that's why they're called cone snails. But um, so cone snails are found in a lot of like Indo-Pacific area, the tropical areas um, like, like the Philippines where I come from. And they are known to eat since like Marita was talking about like all this diet that they're now we're like in for cone snails, they eat fish, worms and other um, snails, but for now, I'll specifically talk to you about um, fish hunting cone snails. So there are different ways that they eat or like hunt for their prey. And so one of the known ones is called this um, taser and tether hunting. As you can see here, the fish is stung by the snail and it happens pretty fast. It becomes uh, like paralyzed and then it's now eaten by the snail. And the other one, it's um, the venom is released in water. And as you can see here, this is Conus geographus. The mouth opens really wide like a net. So it's called a net hunter. Um, and you can see that the fish don't really fight back and they just are easily now eaten by the snail. And it takes like a few seconds and or a, mi a few minutes for it, uh, for it to happen. And um, for the past few years, we've been interested in these deep water hunt, uh, deep water snails. And you can see here that the fish is stung. Let's wait. Yep, there you go. But it, there's no effect. It takes like an hour or so, some even up to three hours before the effect um, happens to the fish. And then you can see that the fish just drops like really close to the snail. And then now the snail can eat it easily. So this one we actually call the ambush and assess hunting strategy. Um, and this we observed this specifically in a clade of cone snails called the Asprella um, snails. And because this was pretty interesting to see, um, like we've never seen this like slow like waiting um, and the slow uh, effect of the venom, then we wanted to see what is in the venom of these Asprella snails. <clears throat> So we got enough venom for um, this cone snail, cone shrilani, and I, I separated the venom components by HPLC and screened every single fraction um, in mice. And I was interested in this certain component that's called it for now fraction 16, um, because it caused this um, slow, um, slow onset of hyperactivity. It just means that normally when you inject the first few minutes after injection, normally you can observe something. But for this one, um, it took more than an hour, close to an hour before the snail, sorry, the mouse would suddenly be um, sluggish and then just stop moving at all. And so um, then we saw that this venom causes like slow onset of hypoactivity in mice. And I was really interested in this activity and I further purified the venom components by following this slow onset hypoactivity in mice until I figured the, um, we figured the peptide sequence and this is the sequence of the peptide. And so this peptide from the cone snail has um, some interesting um, characteristics, but then we know that it is active um, in mice, so, but then we don't know what it actually targets. And so by looking at other um, neuropeptides and hormones in, in humans, we found that um, the venom peptide R01 is actually similar to somatostatin 14. Um, in terms of like having a cysteine um, bond here and actually this um, residues in, this residues in blue, um, are important for somatostatin in binding its receptors. So that was interesting that the peptide uh, consomatin R01 also has those. So we called it um, consomatin because it is similar to the hormone 
somatostatin. So briefly, let's look at what somatostatin is. So somatostatin, this is the human somatostatin 14 sequence. And as I mentioned, these four um, residues are actually important in binding the receptors. Um, so this peptide binds to the G protein coupled receptors, the somatostatin receptors. And in humans, there are five subtypes. And somatostatin itself actually is very important in our body, in the humans. Um, it is involved in various physiological activities um, in the endocrine system and also in the modulation of pain and inflammation. So going back to our comparison, we see here that um, now we know that it is similar to somatostatin, especially this important part. However, um, somatostatin, while it is involved in various physiological activities, uh, the thing is, it wasn't really used for like in, in medicine so much just because it was not stable. It kept degrading. It has like a half-life of less than three minutes. And so we checked if consumatin R01, um, how, how stable it is. And we have like in vitro data that the half-life for somatostatin in um, the blood is just like five and a half hours. Well, the venom peptide is actually um, quite stable with a half-life of more than 158 hours. And what's, um, well, well, we saw that it was stable. We actually looked at the other um, somatostatin analogs that have been developed in, in like pharmaceutical companies because, I mean, they, they would want to use somatostatin, but it was not stable. And so they developed these drugs um, to, to improve the stability of the, of the peptide. And what's really cool to see is the cone snail actually made a similar, like it has similar characteristics of the stable um, stable drug analogs, like the shortened loop size here, as you can see this drug here. And also um, it has this um, D-tryptophan, which is like an isomerized um, uh, amino acid. And also the cone snail just made it that way and also a modified um, and terminal end. So it's like the pharmaceutical companies took so long to develop this, but then the sn cone snails just they they've just been there, it's just waiting to be discovered that and they they would say that they have mastered um somatostatin drug design. Um so that's pretty cool to see that it is stable and then structurally they're the same. Um, but then we have to figure out if does it even activate the somatostatin receptors. So we did a screen um, for the peptide. Um, with against a panel of 318 human GPCRs. So each of these like little bar here in the bottom is a, represents a single receptor. And we saw that, yes, indeed, the, the peptide activates somatostatin receptors. And it was, remember, there are like five subtypes in humans, and it's quite cool to see that it is also um, quite selective. Um, it preferentially activates somatostatin one and four. And these two um, receptors are actually involved in anti-inflammation and analgesia. So like knowing that, like we see, we were thinking, why not check if the venom peptide also has some analgesic effects? So we tested it in a few mouse models of pain. And one of these is the tail flick assay where you um, um, expose the mouse in uh, like thermal pain. And I know that this is, uh, there's a lot of points here, but I like to, um, so the green, I like you to focus on the green and the purple dots, which is the peptide um, itself. And specifically this purple line at 2.5 milligrams per kilogram. Um, at that dose, you can see here and, and compare it with red um, here, morphine. Um, it is the effect, the purple here. So the effect of the, Venom peptide is actually similar um, to morphine. And you can also see that uh, mor while morphine, the effect is somewhat um, like it loses its effect within um, like two hours or three hours after injection. You can compare it with the venom peptide here in purple that I highlighted that it goes like more than more than three hours. Um, so until like here in the fifth hour after injection um, before it loses its effect. So that is pretty cool that we can see that the, the venom or the cone snails actually evolve these peptides um, to have a more stable 
and subtype selective and also has this potential uh, biomedical applications. But the question there is, um, can we find more of these peptides? Can we find more of these specific kinds like these consomatins? So we actually looked at um, different cone snail species and available data in the databases. And I would like you to focus on this green and um, blue dots. So this represents all the other um, consomatins we found from fish hunters and worm hunters. And there are more than 500 consomatins out there. And from this, we found that we now have a library of consomatins to explore, whether for biomedical applications and for, um, we've looked also into the, the evolution of this consomatins. And yeah, so that's, um, it's pretty cool that this uh, discovery has opened so many doors. And just as a summary, um, we have discovered uh, somatostatin mimetic from the cone snail venom, um, we call this consomatins, and we found one that is a stable and subtype selective um, somatostatin analog, and also that we have now a library of consomatins to explore whether to improve the activity or to explore, um, um, to use them to explore other things. And you can read more about our research, the discovery here, the science advances, and we talked also about the evolution um, of the signaling system in somatostatin and atostatin C um, in this other paper over here. And with that, thank you to a bunch of people who like worked with us in this project. And yeah, I am open to take any questions.